How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame and we are back with another FPL video and today it is the Tactics Talk and we're going to be doing Manchester United 4 1 Newcastle and we're going to take a look at Ronaldo's second debut at Old Trafford. He played for the club over 12 years ago and has since which returned at the age of 36 and it looks like he might still have it getting two for himself and United with a all things considered, pretty comfortable win in the end. And we'll take a deep dive into what uh, was allowed for these teams to go and score these goals. And we'll pick out two goals in particular, mainly the fast break ones, for both sides to show what teams can do to potentially defend against this or how devastating these attacks can be uh, for these two oppositions. If you haven't done so already, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new or haven't done so already, and turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. Drop us a follow over on Twitter if you want to keep up to date with any and all FPL news as well as new releases over on YouTube. And lastly, make sure to give us a follow over on Twitch so you can see when we go live for our preview and deadline streams. There'll be a pinned comment down below to let you know when the next stream is. So without further ado, let's talk about our partners for the video with Fantasy Football Scout. So if you haven't heard about Fantasy Football Scout, they have a fantastic members area during the regular season. It's £25 for the membership, and that lasts the entire year. And during the off-season, they give a 20% discount. But if you have missed that discount, fear not. You can still get the membership for £25, and it's fantastic. You can see the membership area just behind me. You have a bunch of different stats that you can use powered by OptiStats and create your own custom tables. You have the Rate My Team tool. You have the Season and ticker player comparison tools a whole array of things that you can use to help elevate your fpl game so use the link down in the description below so that you can get access to these exclusive exclusive tools to help elevate your fpl game sign up now so these are the lineups put out by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Steve Bruce, respectively, in game week four. Pretty similar systems uh, from what they are normally accustomed to. We'll start off with the home team with Manchester United. A 4-2-3-1 for Solskjaer. Nothing really too crazy there. Uh, pretty expected from uh, based on what I saw on Twitter and as well as in other Man United uh, kind of circles, as it were. De Gea and goal, no surprises there. Uh, Shaw, Maguire, Varane, Wambasaka, you're going to see that back line quite a lot you'll also see uh, Pogba potentially playing more in this double pivot role as the season goes on rather than out on the left hand side uh, Matic comes in uh, in place of Fred who was potentially not going to play for this game with the Brazilian FA potentially banning uh, Brazilian players as well as other South American countries as well but that was lifted so maybe they you know practice all week knowing that Fred could be out so they just went with Matic and said just to play it safe. Bruno Fernandes in the 10 as per normal. Jaden Sancho playing out on this left-hand side as he often did for Borussia Dortmund. And Greenwood out on the right-hand side. And lastly, the main man, Cristiano Ronaldo, getting his debut up front for Manchester United. Now, often what United would try to do uh, in possession is make more of a lopsided sort of attack. So when in possession, you would have Sancho trying to square up the... square up one of the... Uh, one of these uh like kind of full backs wing backs they're, they're really just full backs because they're, it's a back three of center backs uh in this case and these guys are not really getting very advanced menke and richie in most cases uh shaw was often making runs uh on the overlap and the underlap as well you would have pogba uh and the likes of matic who were uh just trying to control the center uh, as normal, Greenwood was again trying to also keep Richie kind of pinned back as well. Uh, you would have Ronaldo looking to be involved in the center and forcing these center backs to play a little bit more narrow to kind of maintain his position. Fernandez was often trying to get into these spaces here, drifting out into the half space here and this half space here, creating overloads on either side. I'll just put him here for now. And then United were playing a very, very high line. So Varane and Maguire were, were very high up. Uh, and Wambasaka would often uh, tuck in and kind of leave Greenwood to his own devices. Um, and that would make it so that they still have Wambasaka's cover if St. Maximin were to break with the ball in this position. Wambasaka is probably our best, uh, and probably, in my opinion, the best defensive um, 
uh, fullback in the entire Premier League. Nobody can basically get past him 1v1 in most cases. But even St. Maximin uh, can get past uh, even the best of defenders. Um, you know, he is that good. So what United would like to do is they would have the ball with the center backs, you know, passing between Maguire into Pogba, out to Shaw. Shaw would then come in field, forcing Almiron to follow Mankio to come up. Then it would get Sancho in a 1v1 position. Hayden would slide across. Pogba would try to drop into this space. Ronaldo would drag Lascelles. Uh, Matic would occupy this space. Fernandez would then try to uh, you know, kind of go into that space. Greenwood could also come in and make a run at the back post if he's able to get past Richie and Joe Linton. And United would constantly be probing side to side, uh, backwards and forwards, and kind of just playing the ball between Pogba, Matic, Maguire, and Varane, and switching it from side to side. The thing that they struggled with in the first half is that they weren't playing the ball as quickly, uh, and we saw the tempo was increased uh, in the second half. I mean, case in point, for the uh, one of the goals that we we'll actually take a look at, which ultimately was more of a fast break, but the the third goal was a quick release from De Gea as he kicked it out from the back. It was uh, straight into one of the front men. It was knocked down, played out wide. Greenwood kind of got into no man's land, dropped off a little bit, played it into Pogba. Pogba quick pass through the middle. The defenders drop off a little bit, expecting Fernandez to make another pass, but he says, "Well, we've done enough of that. I'm going to shoot now," and he ends up scoring. And then the last goal was very intricate play in and around the box. It was it was like Pogba had the ball here, played it into Van Der Beek, who played it back to him. Van Der Beek makes a run in this area here, dragging one of the defenders. Pogba then gets the ball, kind of does a little uh, outside of the boot pass and spins around the defender. Martial with the dummy and then Lingard with a little move and then uh, slotting it into the bottom corner was a uh, great move overall. Now, in terms of what Newcastle were trying to do, they were strictly just trying to hit United on the break. So if the ball, you know, if it came out to like the likes of a, an Almiron, as an example, or a St. Maximin, these two guys are, are what, what the threat is. So if Maguire does dive in, which he actually ends up doing for Newcastle's goal, um, and Almiron is able to spin away into space, Shaw needs to basically be on his horses to, to get back because Almiron is quick uh Saint Maximin is quick and even Saint Maximin against Varane who is a very very top quality defender Saint Maximin can go past anybody I'm pretty sure he could have gone past any of the best defenders uh in, in 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 just of all time he is that good of a dribbler um and he is their their main guy and they need to keep him fit um as, as long as as long as wilson's out and even when wilson's back he needs to stay fit because he is scary he is one of if not the best dribbler in the entire league basically you got like him and triore basically that just can't like they're just enigmas. You can't really stop them. Uh, and they were basically just trying to get the get uh, on the break. So an ideal scenario for Newcastle, you're looking at a situation where you have Almiron with the ball uh, versus Maguire, who can beat him for pace. St. Maximin looking for the ball. Um, and potentially one of these one of these uh, wingbacks, either Richie or, or Mankio, to make like a 3v2. So in the situation that kind of transpired, uh, for the for the other goal, it ended up being Mankio uh, in this situation. But we'll take a look at that uh, more in depth. Um, and in defense, mainly, I mean, Newcastle are going to basically play the same. They're going to have Almiron and Joe Linton kind of pressing. They'll have Willick and Longstaff kind of staying a bit more centrally. They'll have this block of, of five at the back. And St. Maximin is just going to be the, the guy who gets the ball on the break. And it's not really anything more complex uh, than that. Um, also, I forgot to put Woodman's Woodman's number in there, but they had a, a Woodman in goal as well, who didn't have the greatest of games. They are without their first two major starting goalkeepers with uh, with Darlow and Dubravka. Uh, Dubravka, I believe, was uh, he picked up an injury, and uh, Darlow's uh, suffering or had to uh, isolate and had to recover for longer than normal, similar to how what what happened to, to Kai Havertz uh, when he had to isolate for a long period of time last season for Chelsea. So I don't think Woodman covered himself in glory. Um, the third goal is not really his his problem. I mean, it's a wonderful strike. You probably shout more at his defenders, to be honest. The the fourth goal definitely not his problem. Uh, the first goal is is you know 
he spills it and it ends up going in the back of the net. Um, and we'll talk about the second goal because uh, that's one of the goals that we have highlighted, which we'll get to uh, just now. So we're going to take a look at... Uh, actually, no, first, what we'll do is we'll take a look at Newcastle's goal uh, because that was an equalizer and they have, that was like against the script. So Ronaldo had scored just before halftime, wouldn't have been making a mistake. Uh, Greenwood taking a shot, would probably shouldn't have. Um, and the ball spills out and Ronaldo just taps it home. Old Trafford goes crazy, it goes to halftime, and then Newcastle come out uh, in the second half and do quite well, and we'll see how they manage to equalize early on into the second half. Now, this was the setup initially for the equalizer for Newcastle. Now, this is exactly what Steve Bruce would have wanted uh, when you're playing against a team that's going to have a lot of the ball, like United, like City, like Chelsea, like Liverpool, the top teams. This is the kind of goal he would have drawn up, as it were, or be an ideal goal for them to get back into the game. Now, Newcastle coming out in the second half, they were a lot more adventurous. Uh, they pressed even more than what they did before. They were constantly harrying United, forcing them to make uh, more rash decisions. United's passing was sloppy uh, at the start of the second half. And they get a, a, a throw in deep in their own territory. But you can see already uh, kind of where the positioning errors could be an issue. Um, basically, Maguire is, is somewhere around the, 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 the semicircle. St. Maximin looks to be well covered. But basically, if Almiron is able to spin into space... Him and St. Maximin will eventually have a 2v2 because St. Maximin's going to outrun Luke Shaw, even with the ball, uh, almost certainly. Uh, Shaw is, is quick, but St. Maximin is just that much quicker. Um, and you can see if Almiron is able to get in behind, uh, specifically, we'll use the yellow pen here, um, in behind in this space, uh, you can see the danger. Also, Mankio, who ends up being the goal scorer, will highlight him here. He basically has this whole side of the pitch to himself because Shaw's come in field he's looking at Almiron uh Maguire and Varane pretty much have St. Maximin uh covered Varane has the recovery pace to come across and stop St. Maximin if he does get into that uh sort of channel there so they feel that there there's no real issues there so what happens so the ball gets uh thrown in Greenwood goes to press Ronaldo kind of is lingering around here Sancho in here United pretty much have Newcastle penned in now, what happens is the ball then gets played out. And Almiron ends up picking the ball up. He ends up dropping off the line. Uh, force, and Varane stays back uh, for this. And Matic and Shaw say, okay, well, we can potentially nick it off him. And then we could have Sancho running in here. We can have, you know, Renato would sniff the danger uh, and, and, and go in towards the box. Fernandez is also available here as well. And what happens is Almiron receives the ball on his left foot, takes a nice touch, a, a, a sort of heavier touch, which is more intentional, I believe, to pull it away from Matic, pull it away from Shaw, and then he's off into space. He then gets ends up getting the ball in here. As Almiron's making this turn, Maguire says, I'm going to take this upon myself. I'm going to ignore St. Maximin, who started to drop off a little bit here. He then runs into this area here to try to stop Almiron uh, from that... Uh, you know, from basically advancing. wan is, you know, sort of coming over. He think he, he looked like he was like, oh yeah, Maguire's got that. He's perfectly fine. But it's not fine because if Almiron skips past Maguire, then you have literally Varane versus Almiron and, and St. Maximin basically in this situation. So as that's actually happening as well, you see Varane make a, like a, a gesture over to the left-hand side to cover for if Maguire doesn't get there, St. Maximin's gone, basically, if he doesn't do that. So he's actually able to follow St. Maximin all the way up until before he lays it off, which St. Maximin's a good enough dribbler to where he's able to play the pass at the perfect time uh, for the goal. So let's see how this one kind of unravels here. So Almiron gets the ball. He then is addressed by Maguire, who he then skips past. Varane at this point is already following St. Maximin uh, as well. And then Almiron's off to the races. And then Almiron carries the ball. He carries, 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 and at this point, wan is in full sprint mode, uh, following along with him. By the time Almiron then plays the ball, it's somewhere around, like, the, you know, 30-yard mark. Um, Shaw, at this point, has has, has booked it uh, back as well. So diving in for one of the, one of the tackles. Maguire, uh, not too far behind, but again, his pace isn't uh, as great. Uh, Varane uh, made the run from here and then kind of 
went straight back. He just bolted straight back because he's and at the same time keeping an eye on Saint Maximin. Gets to about here, uh, where Almiron is basically in space by himself. And at this point, Mankio is surging up the field. I mean, just going absolutely crazy. And Saint Maximin again surging as well. Almiron's kind of uh, run into into this area. Uh, with the ball as well. So Almiron's got the ball. Just as Shaw's coming across. Literally, it's, this is the almost the perfect timing uh, for the pass. The ball then gets laid across into St. Maximin. At this point, Mankio's like here. And at these all of these players are are irrelevant uh in this in this whole in this whole position. Once Matic gets taken out of the equation, it's he's he's not catching anyone. Maguire's basically out of the equation as well. So it's it's 3v3 effectively. But once this pass is made here, Wambasak is gone too. Now you can see where there's danger. Um you can see Shaw's never getting across to Mankio, which would normally be I guess his man, uh, quote unquote, uh, and Saint Maximin is now one v one with Varane, and Saint Maximin can beat anyone. Would you expect Varane to potentially put in a world class challenge? Yes, Saint Maximin, diff he is he is he is well quick and he's very good and skillful, and I think his move is brilliant. Uh, what he does in the end, so this ball gets played across. We'll just move remove the lines here. The ball gets played across. Saint Maximin takes it. Uh, in stride and it's basically around um, around the D area as well. And Shaw is still uh, running, uh, you know, running. Almiron's given given the ball away. Wambasak is uh, kind of tracking Almiron now, just in case the ball comes back. Maguire still lumbering behind again. These guys are all just kind of irrelevant at the moment. And what happens is Ma Saint Maximin is kind of taking the ball a bit more centrally. Varan sees him take a touch. Uh, St. Maximin's close control then allows him to just play the perfect feed uh, into Mankio. Mankio then receives the ball, takes a touch out from under his feet, and by this time Shaw's in and around the penalty spot, just doesn't get there in time to, Macy, to, to, to create a block of some kind. And then Mankio, I mean, you would have thought that he would have been one of the, one of the forward guys, fires it beautifully into the bottom corner. It's an excellent counter-attacking goal uh, for, from Newcastle's perspective. You know, individual pieces of brilliance, Almiron and St. Maximin. We know they're great dribblers. It's just their final end product. And they got it all right here. Almiron with the beautiful pass into St. Maximin. It's perfectly timed. If he had taken an extra touch, Shaw may have got there. Wambasaka may have got there. St. Maximin takes a touch. Varan goes to step in. He then his close control allows him to play it into Mankio, who then sets it up from under his feet and bang into the bottom corner. And the Geordies are happy uh, as the score line is uh one one. And they didn't read the script. Uh, they're like, we're gonna come ruin this party at Old Trafford. Ronaldo, who we got Mankio. So they went on uh, to get that um, to get that equalized, and they were very happy. And for the next few minutes as well, before United's second goal. They were very much on top. They came out in the second half for the first uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so. Really, really uh, caused problems. Ended up getting the goal. But ultimately, United's quality and individual moments of brilliance can be very devastating against lower opposition. And we need to see more like more of this uh, from Newcastle, uh, potentially against um, other uh, tougher or middle table opposition if they want to climb up the table and not be around like 17th 16th you know a couple points out of the relegation later on in the season they definitely have uh, some players who are good enough to create these moments of brilliance it just relies heavily on on this guy saint maximin and almiron kind of having to basically rip through three or four players but in this instance Almiron has one touch. He beats. He he takes out Matic. He takes out Shaw initially. Uh, then Maguire dives in, which probably you should say that he should probably back off. But even still, Almiron takes him out too. So Almiron, with basically a couple a couple dribbles, takes out three United players for just him. Then Saint Maximin takes out Varane basically towards the end with his um with his little touch into Mankio. And at that point, Shaw's out of position because he's already come in field. wan can't catch Almiron, and then Mankio gets the shot off. So a very well-worked counter-attacking goal, perfectly exploiting the high line of United. Also uh, showing that United's defensive capabilities in the midfield area, uh, mainly uh, the likes of Manu Matic, cannot, uh, you know, cover the game basically for the full 90 minutes there will be lapses there will be spaces in the central uh, parts of midfield and quick 
tricky attackers will be able to catch United out um, on these odd occasions if the likes of Luke Shaw and Maguire are caught uh, up the field or Wamasaka is caught up the field. Varane will have the recovery pace, but he can't do it on his own. You, if you have St. Maximin and Mankia versus Varane, you're going to bet the two attackers almost certainly uh, in all scenarios because St. Maximin is an extremely good dribbler. If this had been somebody else, maybe like Joe Linton or uh, you know someone that doesn't have as much quality as St. Maximin does on the ball, you would probably bet Varane in this situation. So that is Newcastle United's equalizer. But let's see United's fast break for their second goal and Ronaldo's brace. Now this is the other goal that we're going to analyze here because a lot of opposition fans and some United fans as well have said that Ronaldo can't play in a counter-attacking system. He needs the balls whipped into the box. He needs to score headers. He needs to score tap-ins. He needs to do all this sort of stuff. Ronaldo can't really or doesn't really press as much but if there's one thing that he still has even at the age of 36 because he is an absolute freak of nature he is in my opinion the best player of all time he has crazy acceleration for like the first five to ten yards like his acceleration is still absolutely rapid i think they clocked him at like 33 kilometers or something on the second goal which is still ridiculously quick so how does this goal kind of come about similar is position just on a, the mirrored side of the pitch uh versus um you know the newcastle uh one uh one one just a little bit different um they united didn't actually end up playing the ball to their mankio in this situation which would have been Jaden sancho so, the ball gets played uh, to Varane, who then plays it into Fernandez, who drops off the line, uh, forcing Longstaff and Willock uh, to, um, to come towards him. So, Varane plays the ball. St. Maximum was pressing quite well. The ball goes into uh, Fernandez. We're going to change it to yellow here. Fernandez plays a one-touch pass into Matic, who then plays a one-touch pass into Paul Pogba, who has now moved his position in here. And then he then plays a... Uh, one touch pass which then goes out to where Shaw had moved up to because Almiron was sucked in towards Nemanja Matic receiving the ball the one touch passing forces this move to actually work if Pogba had taken a couple of touches Matic had taken a couple of touches Almiron potentially strips the ball off of Matic and then he's in 1v1 uh, you know it, it is so crucial to move the ball with pace when you're being pressed Two touch max, one touch is even better. It's the same when you're playing out from the back. It's the same when you're in and around the 18-yard box and you're playing against a low block. If you cannot move the ball quickly, the defense has enough time to shift into position and stop it from happening because they're able to set themselves and say, okay, this is the situation that's going on. We can prevent this. We can see this coming, that sort of stuff. But if it's, oh, I'm about to go get, oh, no, now it's moved. Oh, no, now it's moved. Oh, no, now it's moved. It's more on the fly and you kind of fluster the defense and cause it to make decisions to where they have to adjust. An example would have been Varane going in towards uh, St. Maximin. St. Maximin's beautiful touch on the first goal into Mankio. That's, again, quick play. Almiron's touch uh, between Matic and Shaw. Maguire then makes a decision to, to go up and try to address it. If he doesn't get it right, he's in all sorts of trouble. So even if something as simple as Almiron saying, oh, Match is going to get the ball. He plays it one time, seeing Almiron over his shoulder, and then Pogba then plays it um, you know, past Almiron uh, to Luke Shaw. Uh, and then the ball ends up in this sort of position. Now, Shaw, for the first uh, one of the few times in the game, sees that there's space ahead of him. Uh, and can then drive because the Newcastle defense immediately, the second Shaw gets the ball, they just all drop off. They all drop off. They all drop off. They see Ronaldo uh, looking up. They're saying, okay, we got to make sure that Ronaldo doesn't get this this ball um, and they're going to be on the on the break. So Greenwood uh, makes, makes a run, just kind of pretty straightforward. Uh, Fernandez uh, ends up making some, some form of a run as well. Sancho's uh, was quite intelligent in this move. He was kind of the Mankio, like I mentioned in the situation. He drags specifically Mankio, or at least makes him keep an eye on him uh, when uh, when he starts to make the run. And then Ronaldo's looking to make this run in between the two central defenders here. Hayden obviously being a midfielder uh, by trade, but uh, in between his, his position. So what happens? So the uh, Hayden and, and Mankio are in this position somewhat. Lascelles is... Um, 
me just get the mouse here. Lascelles is somewhat in this position. So they all drop off. Ronaldo's here. Shaw has the ball. Driving at the defense. Sancho's out uh, on this flank uh, looking to, uh, you know, occupy this position. And if Shaw then is able to kind of play the ball uh, in this kind of, uh, this kind of space. Uh, in here, it could be a simple dribble into the box and then tap across for Ronaldo to run on and finish. Willick and Longstaff aren't able to get across to Shaw. Shaw is, once he's gotten ahead of them, and he basi was basically on the other side of the pitch, effectively, uh, when, when he received the ball. It caused a lot of problems for Newcastle on the break. Now, in this position, Shaw decides to play the ball uh, in through to Ronaldo who takes a touch from out under his feet. The this, this pass was a little bit behind, like somewhat behind Ronaldo. It wasn't the perfect pass, but it was still a decent one. Ronaldo then shifts it across, kind of does like a half step over, um, takes a touch, uh, and then fires it through uh, Woodman's legs. Now, you would say, you know, could the goalkeeper have done better? Of course, you never like to get nutmegged as a goalkeeper. I played in goal as well. It's not great. But... You try to make yourself big if the, if the forward's good enough to where he can shoot the ball through your legs with that, you know, that kind of power, then it is, it can be an issue. You want to basically stop, uh, you know, them shooting towards the, the corners as well. But if you also keep your legs closed, uh, then they can just shoot it right next to your leg and you don't have enough time to even move your leg out um, to, to potentially block it. So if they go five hole, which is kind of a term used in hockey, uh, which just means it goes through the, the goalkeeper's legs, uh, then it is something that, you know, it is what it is, basically. Many of strikers have, have you know, finished through the, the goalkeeper's legs. Some of them go bottom corner, some of them go top corner. It just depends on the situation. But Ronaldo takes the shot, goes through Woodman's legs. Um, you would say that, uh, you know, the defense was, you know, should have been a little bit better here. But Shaw's ball was, was you know, it was, it was good. It wasn't, like, the best possible, like, perfectly in stride Ronaldo and then bang in the goal. He still had to do a little bit with it to make the chance from a half chance to an actual really good uh, goal-scoring opportunity. Um, could Hayden have come across and maybe challenged Ronaldo more? Could Manquillo have maintained Ronaldo? Not really, because Ronaldo's pace, just he just basically removes them from the equation so that he gets a free shot off. And Sancho, you know, kind of being in this position makes Manquillo kind of have to say, I still have to be aware of him and I have to be aware of Ronaldo at the same time. I can't pick and choose. So, and it, ultimately what cost him was that he's he has to be looking at both. And when you're looking at both, and you're kind of only half paying attention to Ronaldo, he can end up scoring from half chances, uh, which ultimately those were the two chances that he got in the game. He got the the basically the easy tap in from the spill from Woodman, and then he got this one uh, as well. He didn't really get any other major like chances to where he could have a clean shot on goal uh, and go on and score that. So that just shows that United can do fast breaks if they move the ball quickly. Uh, the three in midfield with uh, Pogba. Uh, Fernandez and Matic, all quick one-touch passing uh, after receiving the ball from Varam. Played it into Shaw. Shaw, we know he's great at driving with the ball. We've seen it for England as well. And uh, yeah, it was a very well-worked goal. Uh, and then the you know they went on to basically control the game. Fernandez getting a wonderful strike from outside the box, and then a well intricate worked goal uh, in and around the box uh, with a lot of congestion allow Jesse Lingard to make it 4-1 on the day so that's going to do it for this tactics talk make sure to leave a comment down below as to what match that you enjoyed the most this weekend as well as which one you think I should do for a game week five and that is going to do it for our tactics talk for game week four. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new or haven't done so already. It greatly helps out the channel. As well as give us a follow over on Twitter so that you can see when we post any FPL related news or price changes or anything in between. As well as give us a follow over on Twitch so you can see when we go live over on that for our preview and deadline streams. We will be doing a deadline stream. Uh, as per normal on Saturdays, but with the exception of this week, as there's a Friday deadline, so we'll be doing it the day before at 7 p.m. EST on the Thursday, and we will have our preview streams 
back tomorrow at 7 p.m. EST on the Monday. That'll be shortly after the Everton and Burnley game finishes. And lastly, make sure to use the link down in the description below so you can get your Fantasy Football Scout membership. You'll have access to customizable stats tables from OptiStats and many other tools in the members area to help elevate your FPL game. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, take care.